Minutes are approved. Uh, on to the next order of business, the presentation of the Zoo Run <coughs> Partnership. Yes, Commissioners, uh, we'll give you an update, a 10-year summary of the Kansas City uh, Zoo Run. And uh, Shannon is coming to the podium, and then uh, I know Lisa's here to talk about it at the same time. So introduce and talk all about it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. McHenry. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Afternoon. I'd like to introduce to you Lisa Drake. She's with Event Midwest. They've been producing the Zoo Run now. We just celebrated its 10th anniversary. So she's going to give you kind of a brief summary of what uh, that has looked like through the partnership and through the eyes of the zoo. Great. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And as Shannon mentioned, my name is Lisa Drake, and I'm the race director for the Kansas City Zoo Run. Um, about 11 years ago, um, my husband Terry and I um, approached um, Steve Lampone and Randy um, to see if we could put a run on at the zoo, uh, a timed event. And they said, sure. And so thus the, the, the Kansas City Zoo Run was born. Um, we also had decided at that, at that time to help a different endangered species each year. So um, the inaugural year, a little bit of the history, started in 2004. And our first year, we had 1,000 people, which was pretty remarkable for a first year race. We were pretty excited about that. Um, so it was a crisp October morning, and everyone came and lined up right at the top of um, the Meyer <coughs> entrance there, top of Mall Drive, right by the former Starlight um, Building uh, entrance. And um, we all started there. And it was just a beautiful venue. And I think one of the reasons why we had um, over 1,000 people is just it's such a beautiful venue. I think the zoo and Swope Park um, just offer so much more than, than a lot of runs, because you know there are a lot of runs around Kansas City. Um, the first two, two years, we offered a 10K and a 5K. And then we learned that it was probably best to do one race. And so we turned it into a four-mile event. So the four miles starts at the top of the hill, and then it goes through the back of the zoo, and then runs through the entire zoo. And then we also offer a one-mile event, and it's a family fun run that's not timed, that starts over by Elephant Overlook and goes through the zoo. So since um, 2004, um, with the, we started with the inaugural event with the Eastern Black Rhino, and then we have supported the cheetah and the African elephant, the orangutan, the frog, the chimp, the polar bear, the black-footed cat, the Sumatran tiger, and, the, um, and then this year it was the penguin. So we help a different endangered species each year. So a little bit about the demographics and the numbers. Um, this event has brought awareness and repeat traffic to Swope Park and the zoo over the past 10 years. Um, we've been fortunate enough to raise over $87,000 um, for different endangered species um, conservation areas around the world on behalf of the zoo. Um, even more exciting, if you take a 1.5 um, average of spectators that come with 18,000 participants that have come over the past 10 years, um, that's 27,000 spectators we've brought to Swope Park and the, and the zoo over the past 10 years, which is pretty, pretty neat. A lot of people have not um, been to the zoo or Swope Park, so it was really a great way to bring people that it would never normally come. So I think the run is a great way to, to do that. Um, this year alone, um, we had 17 states represented, um, so which is pretty neat. I used to be involved with Hospital Hill, and we had maybe 35, I don't know what it is now, but states. But for a four-mile event um, that isn't nationally publicized, I think 17 states is, is pretty good. So, And we even had one from Taiwan this year, which was exciting, <laughs> foreign country. So, um, all right, so a few of the amenities that we provide. So this year, we offered a finisher medal. And so we had a little pink one that we offered. And then we put the different logos for the past 10 years around the, the ribbon. So this was a, a big, big thing. So I think a lot of people signed up because of the, the finisher medal. And then for the mile event, we also had one as well. So, And then also, we offer an artwork contest um, for K through sixth grade. And so the winner, winning artwork gets to be put on long sleeve t-shirts and sweatshirts sold at the event. So it's really a fun time. And then we do a uh, assembly at the school, and we you know, present flowers to them at the award ceremony. It's just a really special thing, and they get $50, and just a lots of fun things. So this is a really a wonderful element. I think you know, we've had the full 10 years that's really been kind of neat. And then this is our four-mile shirt that we put the different logo, as you've seen, 
um, each year. So we get to change our logo each year. So everyone gets a fresh new Zoo Run t-shirt, so they start collecting them. So, and that's, and then also if you get your age group, I didn't bring one, but we have these little plexiglass little um, awards that they get as well, and people start collecting those if they win. So, anyway, um, let's see. Um, one other thing that we also offer is a really nice expo at the event. So we allow vendors to come and, and sell things and give away things. And we have lots of wonderful prizes. We have music. And then this year, for the second year in a row, we offered um, a hot breakfast. So we had Johnsonville really good sausages, uh, meatballs this year, and uh, Mr. Dell's um, uh, hash browns and Liberty Fruit and uh, Farm to Market. So they all supported us greatly. It was wonderful. Um, so that's kind of an overview of the zoo run over the past 10 years and I just want you all to know how this is near to dear near and dear to my heart this run and um, we just so appreciate your support and Shannon and, and Terrell Terrell I should say have done a fabulous job I don't have to worry about anything and everything's taken care of as far as Swope Park we have lots of streets and gates and things to close and we have a couple police officers come too and it's just it works out perfectly so I just really appreciate your support thank you thank you thank you, thank you very much. much do we have a date for 14 um, it's gonna be the first weekend in October I think I'm gonna confirm that but I'm, I think we're gonna stay, stick in October first Saturday, October. First Saturday sorry yeah great. So. That's great thank you for that update yeah. thank you yeah. <clears throat> Uh, next order of business, another presentation uh, regarding uh, Stone Lion Puppets. Yes, uh, partnership uh, with them. Mark, would you please introduce our guest from Stone Lion Puppet? Absolutely. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Mm -hmm. It is with pleasure that I present to you Heather Lowenstein uh, of the Stone Lion Puppet. Uh, I think uh, the board uh, can recall uh, we did an agreement with Stone Lion Puppet about three years ago, a, a five year agreement. Uh, to use one of our facilities on Tracy. Uh, today, uh, Heather, along with some of her board members, are here to kind of give an annual update uh, on the many programs that they have provided, not just the Parks and Recreation Department, but programs that uh, cover the vast majority of Kansas City. So with that, Heather, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Commissioners, thank you for having me today. You're welcome. <laughs> He gave me my rent check back. Come on. How did you get back? I wanted you to present. Oh, okay. I was going, really? <laughs> Didn't get that subtly. It was like, hey, wow. Um, I want to start off um, by introducing some of the guests that I brought to you today. Um, behind us here is Ms. April Roy, who is the president of our board of directors. Um, she is the manager of the Blueford branch of the Kansas City Public Library. Next to her, many of you know uh, Miss Debbie Barker, who um, pretty much runs Lakeside Nature Center. <laughs> no, 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 uh, who is also on our board. And Mr. Fred Goodson, who is passing out some handouts for you, is also um, a local theater director and producer with the House of Gaia. And then um, over here is our office manager and one of our lead puppeteers that have been with us for quite a while, Miss Taylor Gass, who's going to be hitting the button there you go. But um, anyway, um, since many of you, some of you may not know about Stone Lion, I thought I would um, just kind of give you an overview of what we do in the community. Um, first of all, we want to thank you for the partnership. And probably one of the biggest things that we do within the Parks Department and have been doing for the past eight years is our Puppets for the Planet Festival series, where we actually produce local neighborhood festivals that go into the community centers to try and activate art within the community with an environmental message. Um, some of you have been to our events or even participated, um, but um, they are held with workshops. We get other um, in. Uh, like-minded individuals and corporations to come in and do presentations for the community. We offer a wide slate of diverse um, art, including puppets, of course, for the kids to get involved as well as their family. Um, uh, along with that, we are big into workshops. So um, we always have hands-on workshops where they're helping to build puppets for our larger community art festivals. We're really big in trying to get the community involved in the art that we create, as well as their neighborhoods. Um, this summer, we um, did six weeks 
both at Westport and at Brush Creek on top of our Puppets for the Planet festivals into their summer art program. Um, and then we actually offer community art experiences to this, the metropolitan area as a whole. One of the most recent ones we did was Under Arabian Skies, which was held at the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art on September 27th, where we actually held workshops. That's, that's the building right there, where the kids are helping to create the puppets, as well as actually we invited the community to build a giant puppet. Um, and we had senior citizens, we had other artists, we had Arts Institute people, we had kids come in. We also partnered with a local school who actually built one of them on their own. I went in and taught with them. And we created giant illuminated glow-in-the-dark puppets. Um, and this was for the um, opening of the Islamic art exhibit at the Nelson Atkins Museum. They counted around 800 people that night that showed up to participate in that parade or watch us. Um, Mother's Day for Mother Earth is probably the, the well, we think it's the largest um, community arts um, activity in the metropolitan area now. Um, this last year we had about 6,000 people watching the puppets on the lawn of the Nelson Atkins Museum of Art. We had over 60 people in the show and those people came from the local community festivals. Um, they were both kids, adults, they were from foreign countries, they were senior citizens, they were, we even had some um, special needs children that were in the particular show. And it's about creating art and showing everyone that they can be part of the art with a positive message. Um, Here's another picture of a different one. This one was down at Tice Park the year before. You can see the kinds of crowds that we get and um, the kind of fun that we can um, endure for the community itself. Um, so if you add it up, um, Stone Lion is actually celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. And with that, we have been annually producing over 300 performances into schools, festivals, um, international festivals, and in your community centers. Um, we've become, in my opinion, an ambassador for America's Creative Crossroads. I was actually helping out with all of those things for the Mayor's Task Force for the Arts, as well as the Arts KC Fund. But Stone Lion is gaining a reputation internationally, and we are trying to bring that back here locally and connect with the citizens of Kansas City, Missouri. Um, we have some of the area's largest community arts projects, and nuts and bolts, we did over $50,000 worth of free programming into the Parks Department alone this last year so far, um, which is well over what you've asked us in trade out for the building. <laughs> um, what's next? Um, right now, we're working on an international partnership with IKC, the International Knowledge and Classroom Exchange. We are working with N10.org, another local nonprofit, and Project Central. Some of you may know them from the Kansas side because they were the ones who engineered the Kansas Green School program. But with them and the ABC schools, we are actually writing project-based curriculum based on STEM core curriculum with arts for the schools of Nairobi, Kenya. And we are going to be partnering and doing sister schools with technology exchange with local schools here. So that we will actually be having classrooms that are shared with the classrooms in Kenya. And it's all arts based. Um, kind of a little different thing for Stone Lion branching out um, that way. We are also partnering again with um, the people in Cambodia, which um, put on the giant puppet project of Siem Reap, which I went and worked with, and um, is a uh, uh, muse, I should say, for a lot of our Mother's Day for Mother Earth. Frankly, they taught me how to build them a whole lot lighter so we get a whole lot more volunteers involved because it doesn't break their backs. <laughs> and um, Mark and I are in the middle of going around and figuring out what to do with the summer arts programming to bring more arts into the community centers for next year. Um, where can you see us? Well, this weekend, we're at, we're at the zoo, both Saturday and Sunday. We are at the Tony Aguirre Harvest Festival on the 25th, 
and we hope that everybody will show up November 1st because we're putting another illuminated giant puppet parade on starting at Tony Aguirre Community Center and going to Matty Roads for the Day of the Dead featuring Dead Betty which is the puppet that you saw in the newspaper last Sunday <laughs> for the opening of the Matty Roads um, Day of the Dead celebration. Um, and it should be really fun. And we need lots of volunteers to make this happen so all of you can come out and help carry Dead Betty and the other giant puppets, you know, or dance along with the marigolds and see a couple of folklorical groups dancing and things like that. Um, um, and then December 14th, we will be at the Great Kleis Holiday Party as well. Um, so you give us the space. That's our workshop there. And we try to bring it to you. So thanks for giving us a hand. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, thank you. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. OK, we'll, just, we'll, we'll leave it there. For, for auditor's purposes, I don't yeah, touch any exactly. exchange. <laughs> 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 any questions? Is there programming or anything that we're doing? You know, uh, I, one, I, I think you're, you're a tremendous asset to the community, first and foremost. I mean, that's just not by virtue of the partnership we have with, with Parks Board, just everything that you do in town. You, you are a first-class organization, you and everybody who's here representing uh, your organization. So. My, you know, my hat's off to you for all the great work that you guys do. Uh, and second of all, I just want to say I have been personally involved with you guys on various sort of projects here and there uh, and in the arts. And I can tell you, uh, you guys are extremely well respected in that field. And we're just fortunate to have you all as a partner uh, in Parks and Rec. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, thank you. Thanks, guys. <coughs> okay. Looks like we're going to have an order of business here on resolution number 30098. Yes, commissioners, it's resolution to accept uh, deeds for 8217 and 8219 Brooklyn Avenue. Uh, these would both be additions to Marlboro Park. Yep. Uh, you have a memo from Travis mm -hmm. and a resolution, <coughs> and I believe there's a map in there too that shows the, the location. Um, we recommend acceptance of these two tracts of land on Brooklyn. And if you have any questions, uh, Travis is ready to answer those. Any questions? We've discussed this several times. Um, yeah. Hearing none, is there a motion to uh, approve the resolution and accept the, the, the properties? Second. Okay, you, you'll move, you'll second. second. All right, fair enough. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Very good. Resolution passes. On to the uh, director's report. Yes, uh, major construction, Travis. Good afternoon, Commissioners. There's a couple of items in front of you. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is the um, stone repair work at Jacob Luce Park. You can see on the uh, first slide that, well, we'll start out with the uh, SNA Concrete is contractor on the job. Um, uh, the project for the stone repair down there is about $85,000 worth of work that was incorporated in a larger contract uh, doing stone repair at several different locations across the city, um, not the least of which is also a Union Cemetery down there. You'll notice that there's a lot of work going on mm -hmm. there as well, but I thought I'd highlight uh, Jacob Luce Park here as far as um, being kind of iconic and uh, the quality of the work that's being done. You can see on the back of the page the uh, workers working on the wall behind the uh, uh, statue down there and some of the some of the work as it's completed doing a very good job that location and uh, as as well as the other locations dollars for this came from this was uh, PIAC funds on uh, and there, <coughs> there were private funds some private oh on this I'm sorry the overall contract, yes, this specific work was private funds on, okay. on this work. Sure. The overall contract is somewhere in the neighborhood of about $365,000. Right. And so, so, but this work specifically was private funding, okay. yes. Great, thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Hall. The second project, uh, give you a unique perspective of uh, restroom installation on uh, <laughs> off of Elmwood up in Swope Park. You can see these uh, prefab uh, CTX uh, restroom units come in on a flatbed trailer 
They're offset with a crane and, um, uh, and they rough in the plumbing prior to the installation and and uh, so once once the thing hits the ground it's uh, just a matter of uh, get, getting the uh, water line, sewer line connected to it and it's ready to roll. Great. Any questions, Travis? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Heidi. Marketing report. <laughs> Good afternoon. What? Well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to try. Um, these last few months have been really busy for us, of course. The fall months always are, as well as almost every other month, now that I say that. <laughs> anyway, um, this past weekend we had quite a bit going on. I'm hoping you guys got out and about. We're able to take advantage of we have Magic Woods, which I hear is very successful as always. Thank you. At, uh, like Site Nature Center. Of course, the Harvest Festival out at Shell Creek Living um, History Museum in Hodge Park. There was the One World Football uh, giveaway at 9th and Van Brunt. We had the 18th and Vine Jazz and Blues Festival, which was formerly uh, Rhythm and Ribs, as well as Water Fire on uh, Brush Creek. And uh, we had a huge turnout to that. Beautiful weather that day, probably the best weather we've had in several years for Water Fire, particularly the, like, two years ago when it was torrentially downpoured and called off. But um, anyway, it's a busy time for us. Um, you may have noticed also that the Pink Fountain, uh, J.C. Nichols Pink Fountain, we went ahead you carried the KU Cancer Center ask and paid to have um, the pinking of the fountain extended for a couple of days so it ran through the Chiefs game mm -hmm. on Sunday so the pink fountain was featured on national television mm -hmm. so that was pretty exciting um, as I've mentioned before the Brush Creek Art Walk exhibit is still on exhibit at <coughs> the Bruce R. Watkins Cultural Heritage Center if you haven't gotten by to see it it's a fantastic um, exhibit of paintings we've gotten a lot of uh, kudos and comments on the high quality of work that is represented there um, hanging in our facility through the 24th. Tomorrow, of course, we have the exciting groundbreaking for a new and third off-leash dog park in the Kansas City metro area. It is a partnership with North Kansas City, Missouri, and uh, we'll be digging some ground and planting a tree in that park, and I know you're going to be there, Commissioner, so any of the others plan to be there or just show up? <laughs> Great. It is at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Um, on Thursday evening, we have the Visitors Awards Ceremony, Visitors Choice Awards with the Convention and Visitors Association. And this is always fun because it's uh, truly visitors that can vote. You have to live outside 50 miles of the area to be able to vote on these um, awards. And we're always up for many categories where we compete with ourselves. So it's <laughs> kind of fun, though, because we're almost certainly guaranteed an award in several categories. Uh, favorite outdoor work of art. We've got several in there. Favorite park lake. Favorite landmark, landmark or monument. And favorite fountain. We might win a lot more this year. They've changed up the categories. And then favorite golf course. So. <laughs> Uh, Mark and I will be there representing. If any of you want to come down, it's uh, they are in power and light, and I can get you more details. But it's a uh, it's kind of a fun event, especially when you win. <laughs> and then uh, following that, of course, we get into. Um, November we have the wilderness run up at Shoal Creek Living History Museum and we have confirmed the time for the opening ceremonies for the Swope Soccer Village and that will be on Tuesday November 5th at 3 o'clock. Lots going on. Yeah and then of course this weekend we also have the marathon right. which will be running through the parkways and the boulevards and all through the streets of Kansas City mm -hmm. with thousands and thousands of visitors bringing lots and lots of money into our community so we're very excited. <laughs> All right. uh, a couple other director items. Do you have any questions for Heidi? Any questions for Heidi? No. Okay. Thank you for the. Sure. Uh, Thank you. I'm going to pass down a memo uh, that I got from Pat O'Neill. Uh, just uh, look at this at your leisure, Commissioner. This is a request to uh, place the uh, name of Jim Nutter Sr. on a section of Broadway Boulevard. Honorary name. I think most of you probably know who Jim Nutter Sr. is. And uh, there's a write up in here from Mr. O'Neill. Uh, about all the contributions he's made to our community and also there's a petition signed by several individuals that support that request. So this would go through the city process through uh, City Hall and the Public Works and then uh, probably be bringing this back to you at a, at a future board meeting. 
Uh, and then one other item I want to pass down is every year we get a chance to s appear before the City Council Legislative Committee, which is chaired by the mayor, to talk about uh, policy issues and priorities in the areas of legislation. And here's our federal legislative priorities. We pass that on down. And uh, there again, take that with you. We're open for questions and comments. I believe we have an uh, opportunity to present this a week next Monday. Is that right, Terry? Yeah, next, next Monday. And uh, Kamiko Gilmore, Assistant City Manager, helped coordinate this for the Mayor's Committee. And uh, this highlights some priorities um, that are also endorsed by our National Recreation Parks Association on primarily funding and policy issues about parks on a nationwide basis. So I want to share that with you also. Great. Thank you. Still just a draft. If you, there's anything you want to make sure that we include things on yeah. okay. We'll probably have some state items coming up too. Yeah. Okay. Besides that, we'll. Is it? On okay. Great. Great. Our public hearing, we have one person, uh, John Murphy. Yes. Speak. Yes. We are guests. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, my name is John Murphy. I'm with the Armor Fields Homes Association. I represent 800 homeowners in the Brookside area. Our Homes Association takes up uh, uh, the space between Gregory and West 65th Street, Ward Parkway, and Warnell Road. I'm here to talk a little bit about the marathon and some of the problems we've had in the past and uh, potential problems we're going to have next week and like them, like them addressed. Um, again, um, last year, we had a large amount of trash left all over the uh, the streets. We cleaned it up that last year. We did it ourselves. We're not doing it again this year. Uh, every year we have the marathon. Uh, the streets parallel to Ward Parkway and Warnell Road uh, are the only north-south access ways on the western edge of Kansas City. What ends up happening is cars somehow end up there and they hurtle down those roads at high speeds. It's very dangerous for the residents living on those streets and the kids living in those neighborhoods. Uh, they're narrow roads, they're residential streets. Uh, two years ago, a, um, a, a Nebraska Furniture Mart truck was just ripping down the street, took out the uh, sides of some trees. They're lost. For whatever reason, when people get lost on, on narrow streets, they go faster. We've asked last year, and I've asked this year, to have increased police presence on those streets. I've been denied that request this year. Uh, that's problematic for us. We want to make sure that the people who pay the bills in the city, the people who live in this city, get what get the protection they need from from the city um, in terms of the trash I've been given the telephone number of the lady who has uh, requested the permit um, I'm not sure if that means she's immediately going to get out and clean it up I don't know if that means that uh, 311 has got her number but again um, it's trash it's problematic uh, they're left on the islands, the islands that we maintain in those neighborhoods. The reason I believe that they run through those neighborhoods mm. are because they're scenic. Are they not, Mark? Is that the reason why they're, yeah. Well, as you know, yeah. those islands are public work owned islands, and each of the homes association in that area pay to maintain them. Last year, we spent $35,000 maintaining those islands out of our pockets, and we get nothing from the city. So we want to make sure that when we're paying, paying for these things, that, that we, we're not dealt, we, don't have to, we don't have to pay to clean them up, okay? Um, I also requested, I have had several meetings with staff and, and, and one of the vendors that you guys have employed to help manage this, and they're nice people, but um, I had a meeting here in May of 2013 with a member of your staff, two members of your staff, Mark. I requested that signs be posted uh, in front of Valley, Pennsylvania, and Summit to say local traffic only, and where are we with those signs? Do we get them? We'll, we'll get you an answer. By when? Saturday or Monday next week? No, I've been asking all summer long. Before you leave here today. Okay. And if we don't have them, what are we going to do about them? So we'll have you an answer before you leave here today. Okay. Um, that's essentially it. I mean, if you guys want to have these events, fine, great. Uh, you know, but you're going to have to manage them a little bit better and get more input. Regarding the police, the police should have an outreach program talking to the residents in the areas about possible problems to supplement what they think needs to be done. Now I've called, uh, I finally got a hold of Alvin Brooks Friday night and I told him that and he's supposed to have one of the deputy chiefs get back to me and it's now Tuesday, I have not heard back. And there's a number of folks that are so tacked off about what goes on with the marathon and the, uh, the, the cutting off of streets and people not being, it, it, being able to get out of their neighborhoods on the weekends that they're willing to go to court and block these things. So rather than have that happen, let's have a better managed process. So, any questions for me? Any questions at this time? Is your Homes Association's name again? Armor Fields Homes Association. Okay. 
AFHA. Okay, great. Any questions? Comments? I think we're going to well, do some work, and I, I think this yeah, is Yeah, we've got some folks here today. Okay. Uh, and I think you know a few of them. Uh, I, I met them, but, I, you know, the thing is, it, it's great to have meetings, Mark, but if we're just going to sit around and, you know, glad hand each other it, and things get not get done, I, I've had enough of those. No, let, let, let me finish it. Okay. Thanks for being here today. We appreciate your time. And if you have a few extra minutes, uh, I'll, I'll wait. These, I'll be right here. folks that are here, and uh, you've got folks here from the Sports Commission. You've got folks here that work on the coordination. They're all here, and they're glad to visit with you right now. That's great. And I want to make sure that 311 has the numbers. When people, not from my homes association, but the, the dozen others that are up and down that route, mm -hmm. have problems, that they can call it, and it gets solved okay. pretty quick. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Uh, that concludes our public hearing. Um, I would like to make a motion that we go into closed session okay. during workshop or meeting to discuss legal and personnel issues pursuant to Missouri, Missouri Revised Statute Section 610.021. Okay, very good. Uh, is there a second? Second. There's motion and seconded. Uh, Commissioner Dillingham, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, I vote aye. Mr. Yes. Brian? Yes. Okay, very good. I, I just also want to say one other thing before we adjourn. adjourn. Uh, when we come back out of closed session, we are uh, adjourning the meeting, so there'll be no other business discussed at that point. So, thank you. We are in closed session. <laughs>